I've heard it said that if you want to be a star, keep your mouth shut. Don't talk. Like, in order to become a star, you have to suppress your outgoing energy so that it can build within. Because if you're always talking, people don't want to, aren't going to look for you. They're not going to go out of the way to see you because you're always talking. So don't talk. Maybe it's the specific way of talking. There's a specific way of talking. So don't talk. Don't laugh. If you laugh a lot, you probably won't be a star unless you're a really attractive girl. Really hot girl is what I was thinking. But even then, when people laugh a lot, they're usually the people that are watching the, the star. I don't really have anything to talk about. I just figured I'd throw up the... Oh yeah, I want to talk about weed. I, I thought, yeah, I'll do something like, in this lifetime... Something cool. Something that I'm good at, though, I thought. So, like, I would be, do something mathematically, or with acting, or music. I've always been very passionate about music, but acting is a lot easier for me than music. Like, stage acting and screen acting and things. Cameras don't bother me, really. I don't ever really bother me much. Because I got nothing to hide. Um, but then what it turned out is, okay, maybe I'm going to do some political marijuana movement. Because if I'm getting... If I can get marijuana legalized, we'll have society back on track. Hemp should be legal. Hemp is a plant that they use to make paper and clothing and food and fuel, rope, hemp. Dude. So they, they burn it all. They stock it all and burn it all and sell paper. They cut down trees and sell paper. And they cut down more trees. Because it made William Randall Hearst a lot of money in the 20s. Like, we've only, it's really only been illegal for like a, less than 100 years, I think, something like that. George Washington grew it. It's that. So, I guess really what it's about maybe is. I, I gotta be patient, I, like waiting until the new president is in, until there's more liberal uh, governance. It's California. I've heard uh, Obama's pretty liberal on uh, weed laws. He wouldn't have, he would cut out all the federal raids of all the medical marijuana clinics in California. Which ultimately, it's like so you 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 file with the state and then you can use the sub, use the plant you can burn it and smoke it and do whatever you want with it you eat it that's the way to go I don't mind the filing with the system I think sure file with the system it's a drug it's like alcohol you don't have to file with the system to use alcohol but you gotta be 21 you gotta have an ID you're supposed to and that's a pretty good system I don't think they should illegalize substances just flat out without really thinking about it and doing a lot of research and talking about it and listening to people that use it like any substance coke meth any any drug any hard drug it doesn't really like to throw someone in jail for using speed doesn't make sense to me to throw someone in jail for for punching someone when they were on speed is fine. Throw someone in jail for punching someone, period. I mean, it's really like jail's like an anti-violence place. If someone's violent, hold them in a holding cell. And then we got to fix the prison systems. we got to make it so that... Oh, we were saying so that all the prisoners, we feed them weed, like prescribe it to them. And uh, let them talk out their issues in prison. Dude. <laughs> World would be a better place, man. Rather than dudes sitting in there lifting weights, getting angry... Get them stoned. <laughs> I know, man. I've been there. I did it. I didn't do it until I was 23. I waited because I, I, I knew it was like a powerful substance drug. And then I did it. And I know what it's like now. And I know people can really benefit from it.
especially in short bursts of it or short short term. Like a few years of someone's life, I think everyone would benefit from, from taking THC for a few years of their life because it helps you to think in a different way. It doesn't ruin your mind, your thoughts. It just helps you to think in a different way, which is a better way, which is the kind of way that leads to revolution. George Washington, man, he fucking grew crops, documented that he grew it and separated it into male and female because you smoke the female, I think, and you use the male to make rope and stuff out of. Could be the other way around, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, leads to music, all this, all, like, I'm not going to say all music, but like the Beatles, the Beatles, John Lennon smoked a lot of weed, smoked a lot of dope is what I was going to say. Uh, I mean, so many great thinkers throughout time. I don't know for sure because I wasn't around and they didn't. people don't really talk about it. They kind of like keep it hidden and on the DL because it's illegal or been illegal. So you don't, and there was no documentation of it back in the day. And for whatever reason, man, people just don't talk about it. But like Socrates, probably they were in a, in a pretty like well-maintained society. So they had money, they had access to crops, they had access to food, they had access to goods, they had access to alcohol, they had access to marijuana, I'm sure. Because it's a weed, you grow it all over the place. And it makes you think, like, existentially, when you use it. So that's what I'm thinking. All these philosophers probably smoke weed. <laughs> probably, man. I, I don't know why I laugh when I say that. Because I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like projecting it. Because for me, I always liked philosophy when I was younger. I liked, when, in like in seventh grade, I remember talking, we would go to Taco Bell and talk about things, science and philosophy. And I, I thought, I remember saying that it, we, the whole universe could be falling at the same rate. And we wouldn't know, because it would all be moving at the same speed. All the planets, the sun, all the asteroids, it seems like they're moving towards us, are actually falling at a million miles an hour and moving towards us, but all falling. If it's all falling, then you wouldn't know it's falling. I had that thought, but that was about the extent of it. Then once I started smoking weed, once I started taking the THC and having this dreamy experience in life, I started to like feel it. I started to be with the falling, like be as if it was in front of me on a screen, on a computer screen in my mind, and I was seeing it and, and feeling it and envisioning it and being it, like being that, like no Ian Cross and body, only this experience. It's deep, dude. It, it really changed a lot of things about the way my mind works for the better. Because I still have the logistics, and if I don't smoke weed for a couple days even, or like a week, I am clear-minded. Like, way clear-minded. And, and, I'll, and I'll think even, like, why do I even smoke weed? Why do I do that? Why do I take that stuff in? And, and it'll, like, weeks will go by, and I'll, and I'll be like, this is, I feel so good. I'll be a little agitated. I start to, like, I, will, I drink more alcohol, I've noticed, when I don't take any weed. or any. I don't, I don't want to say take weed, because I'm taking, I'm taking THC. I, and I'm taking it either through inhaling it or through eating it, usually inhaling it. Sometimes I vaporize it because I don't like burning. I don't like smoking. I'm not really. It's like that's the easiest way to do it. But So it's, the th it's not weed. It's not weed that I take in. I take in THC, tetrahydrocarbon. Uh, uh, tetrahydro... Fuck, dude. Uh, I'll look it up after this and see it over on the, that side. It's it's a specific drug that when when attaches to the cannabinoid receptors, maybe it's like tetra something cannabin cannabinoid or something. Um, the pineal gland starts producing a lot of melatonin, and you start that's what your body produces when you're sleeping. So you get like a dream feel, but you're still awake. Um, to get back to that train right now. Um, so like, I'll be like, why do I even do that? I, I feel so, I feel so good um, without it. I do feel good without it, but then I get really, start to get really stressed out, and I, and I don't, and I'm, and I'm more likely to be like, dude, I don't know, I, dude, I don't know, dude, I don't know. Please, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm more likely to do that when I'm not stoned. Stone is even a weird description of it. When I'm not in that dream state, when I'm in that dream state. I don't yell. I don't yell at people. I don't shut people out. I, I'm more likely to flow with whatever's happening because I, I figure like it's all a dream, 
it's all kind of what I'm making it. So if they're angry, I'll go with it. Let them be angry, and then they'll calm down. It'll be what I want it to be. It's a dream. And life is a dream. We just don't really see it that clearly because we're programmed to move around and to survive. Survival within the dream is very strange. You know, you got to all this stuff that's like, you know, you sit down, you feel the chair in your ass, you, you bump into a wall, and it pushes up. So it's not, it's, it's a more heightened dream. It's a more sensified dream. And it's like the one dream that you can't, like you can die in the dream, so and then the dream's over, so it's not really like a, well, I guess it's the, I don't know, honestly, I don't know, man, because you could, maybe this is like all happening really fast, I think it might be happening really fast, like all our, our lives are like, they seem like they go a long time, but then it's just a constant state of that, so it's like, they're all happening. And it's always in, it's, it's like one dream to the next, like in your dreams you have a dream and it's like there's no time in it, it's just this experience that ha is happening and happens and then all, all of a sudden there's a new experience, sometimes they blend and sometimes it's like one experience and then to the next experience and then it's like, they, it's like they end and begin but it's like not even like they end and begin, it's like it's all one thing but they're all different, such as lives. Um... But I want to explain, like, I'll be like, why do I even do this? Why do we even take THC when I'm not doing it for a while? Because I'll, I'll be like, I don't need it. I can live life without it. But it helps me to accomplish specific things, particularly bringing people together. It's hard to do when I'm stressed out or when I'm not, you know, when I'm not, like, when I'm not having any sex and not taking any drugs, I get really stressed out. Maybe maybe if I was swimming a lot, I would feel better. I was thinking if I had money, but I don't think it's money. I think it's like, maybe I could have that same impact on society um, creatively without that dream, that dream induction. If I was having a lot of sex with someone that I loved, and, and like losing myself in that moment, kind of like flowing in that in that oneness of of love, of being in that, losing track of time and feeling, just being. Oh, it's been so long since I've experienced it that it's hard to place words on it. But that I, I like it. I like that feeling. I've been there for a long time. I did it a long time. It's stressful to get there, and it's stressful. When it's not happening, like right around that time, it's stressful, relationships stressful. But when you're there in that moment of laying in bed with someone that you love and looking at them, and not even looking at or listening to them, or, or eyes closed, eyes open, all these things, just being there, being there, and forgetting. It's, it's, a, it's, rechar it's a rejuvenation. It's... It's kind of like the same thing. So maybe if I if I start doing that, throw myself into that, I don't need the the THC to accomplish the the rallying effect because it's stressful for me to be around a lot of people. Like if I get a group of people around me when I'm straight sober, straight up, like I get up, I take a shower, maybe I stretch a little bit, I eat some a banana and some yogurt, or I eat a banana and some fruit. And then I go and I gotta go get like 20 people or 15 people or nine people around me and, or 20 people. It's really stressful for me. I've always I made myself force myself to do it. I do the theater and these things because I want to learn how. But it's stressful for me. My parents didn't really teach me how when I was very young to be around a lot of people. They 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 would thrust me in front of a lot of people, but they wouldn't teach me how. They wouldn't focus on me a lot. They would they would focus around me. So I was used to like people. At, doing things and paying attention to each other and paying attention to me a little bit. Not like, I wasn't used to being the center of attention, so I kind of created that for myself. Thing is, when I'm stoned, when I've taken this THC dream, I can do that. I can be in front of thousands of people, in front of a crowd, say whatever I think, because it's all a dream. There's no rules. 
the rules change. I mean, we play, we say there's rules of physics, but then those change. Laws, they change. Laws, real laws change. The laws a thousand years ago are different than the laws today. will be different than the thousand year laws, next thousand year laws. Probably different than the next hundred year laws. All these laws, constantly, constantly flowing and changing. Nothing is permanent. So when I'm when I when I've got this THC in my system and I'm dreaming and I'm aware I'm dreaming in life, it's easy, man. I can have all the people around me say whatever the fuck I think, whatever I want, listen to the people. I can go like hours without speaking, just listening. You'll see me, I'll look really weird, like I'll have my eyes closed and be like But I won't be speaking, I won't be interrupting the flow. I'll be like my body will be like, oh, because it's a weird thing to go for a long period of time and not talk and have other people around you talking, but it's possible. And I don't give a fuck that I look weird. I don't care that I look weird, especially when I'm when I'm stoned or high or these words stoned. It makes me think of dazed, and not only like dazed, it's just dreamy. It's like hey, a little hazy because it's like a dream, but it's you can be very clear in it. Um. So I don't care that I look weird. I don't care that I seem weird. I don't care about that stuff. I want to bring people together for social action and good positive change away from dictatorship, evolve democracy. And when I'm sober, when I'm straight, as I am most of my life, it's very difficult for me to draw a crowd. I get very nervous. And I think if I had another person that I loved with me, I could do it because I would feel... I would forget. I would forget that there was a crowd. It wouldn't matter. There wouldn't be a crowd. It would just be me and her. 